But you know, hey, whatevs. I'm a professional. Do you need a delicious breakfast that's ready in less than 10 minutes? Then keep watching, because this video is for you. My name's Mindy, and I've lost over 125 pounds using GLP medications as a tool. And today I wanna walk you through a breakfast taco egg scramble that will be quick and easy to throw together so that you can be out the door in minutes with a delicious protein packed nutritious breakfast that will keep you full for hours. So if that sounds good to you, please give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get going. The awesome part about this meal prep in particular is, is that it is extremely versatile. You can change and adapt it to whatever your specific tastes are. Let's go back to yesterday when I threw together this meal prep so that today I would just have a couple things to do to have a quick and easy breakfast on hand. Thanks for that lovely handoff, future Mindy. Oh yeah, that bit was completely and totally unnecessary, but you know what, here we are. So I'm trying so hard to fix the lighting situation in this kitchen. It, the lighting in here is terrible. I live in a cave, if you didn't know. There are no windows anywhere in my apartment except for on one wall. And they aren't even windows, they're just doors with glass in the middle. Look. I can't move from this place soon enough, but <laughs> that's, that's a topic for another day. Anyway, I'm going to get this meal prep thrown together. Yes, I look like trash. Yes, I just came back from my walk. Yes, we had the time change this weekend where I gained an hour of sleep, and yet somehow I still feel like actual trash and had to snooze my alarm for another hour this morning. But, you know, hey, whatevs. It's time to meal prep some breakfast. Meal prep is a dirty word for a lot of people because it conjures images of hours and hours of time and an entire day lost to just preparing meals where you're gonna have to eat the same thing every single day for a whole week. I don't approach meal prep the same way as most people. I mostly just use it as a way to, and I just noticed this door is open behind me. I'm a professional. I use it as a way to save myself some time during the week. I know that I'm not gonna wanna make a big production out of breakfast in the morning. That's why throughout my journey, uh, about 90% of it, I've eaten the same breakfast every single morning because it's so quick and easy to throw together. But every once in a while, I want something different. Throughout my journey, both this one and ones in the past, I have actually really enjoyed a website called Skinny Taste. She puts a lot of emphasis on Weight Watchers, which I'm not a huge fan of, but mostly for me, it's just a resource for lower calorie, fresh, delicious recipe ideas that I can get to make throughout the week. So for this week, I mostly just wanted to give you guys some ideas to make meal prep a little bit more approachable. Instead of prepping an entire week's worth of meals, maybe start with just one meal. This meal will maybe take me 15 to 20 minutes from start to finish to throw together. Would probably only take me 10 minutes if I wasn't filming. But I wanna give you some tips and tricks for ways to make meal prep go a little more smoothly. One of the things that I highly suggest if you're going to start doing meal prep is to get some meal prep containers. And I have been using these for the last, I don't know, six months to a year. They're a four cup I think these are Anchor Hawking glass bowl. They have a lid. I like glass because I can portion them with some of my meals. I can individually portion and bake right inside the container. And then once they're cool, I just put the lid on, pop them in the fridge, and they're ready for me to just pull out and reheat right in the same container, whether I want to do that in the microwave or in the air fryer, which I often do because texture. I recently have found some new meal prep containers that I definitely plan to get my hands on. They're still four cup containers, but they're actually rectangular and I like that shape a lot better. <laughs> I've noticed when I try to make certain types of dishes, that circular, deeper shape doesn't really work as well. And also it's harder to store circular containers. I don't know why it's hard to find room in the fridge for them. So anyway, I will link the rectangular glass ones that I plan on purchasing down in the description below if you're interested in taking a look because I find that makes things 
a lot easier. The next tip that I have for you guys is to get all of your ingredients out before you start actually cooking. So I already have everything out that I'm going to need for this recipe. It's all on this board. I know that doesn't seem like a lot of ingredients. And again, we're keeping it simple. So this is going to be a breakfast taco scramble. I say scramble in air quotes because I don't plan on making the egg portion of this ahead of time because I have a thing about reheated eggs. Unless it's like in a quiche or something or a custard, but reheated scramble eggs to me, not so much. So my plan is while I'm reheating the meat and potatoes in my meal prep container, I'm just gonna either fry or scramble up a couple of eggs on the side and it'll just that way the eggs are fresh every morning and it won't really take me any extra time because I'll just scramble them up while I'm warming up the other stuff in the air fryer. The next tip I'm going to give you is to definitely read your recipe all the way through before getting started. I do not always follow my own advice in this regard and then halfway through the recipe I'll realize I forgot an ingredient somewhere or I didn't plan my time efficiently so now I'm having to do something that I really should have done first or whatever. In this recipe in particular the thing that's going to take the most time to cook is the potatoes so I want to start the potatoes first. Thankfully Skinny Taste is really good about organizing the directions in her recipes to kind of do that part for you but it would be really easy to just start with the beef and not think about anything else and then realize all of a sudden oh no I need to do the potatoes and the potatoes could have already been cooking while I was doing the ground beef anyway organizing your thoughts in that way definitely helps to cut down on the amount of time that you're going to spend doing meal prep overall. The other thing I'm going to tell you is, is that when you take a look at this recipe, if you take a look at this recipe, there are a couple of ingredients I'm using here that are different than what she has. And that's because number one, 99% lean ground turkey is disgusting. In my opinion, it's like, it has the texture of chalk. Like there's just not enough fat in it to make it delicious. Fat is not bad for you. In fact, for women, it's extremely important for hormone regulation, all sorts of things. So I have 93% lean ground beef because I prefer beef. And believe it or not, beef has more protein per ounce than turkey, even with the same amount of fat content. Not sure how that works out, but I'm okay with it because I prefer the taste of beef anyway. And I always have some in my freezer from when I bulk shop when stuff is on sale. The other thing I am using is russet potatoes because I'm not gonna go out and buy another pound of gold potatoes when I have two pounds of russet potatoes sitting in my pantry waiting to get used. So use what you have. It's a budget saver bonus tip. I also leave the skins on my potatoes for the most part, especially when they're this small because they're nice and tender. I just use a stiff bristle brush and I scrub them really well. Uh, a plastic bristle brush, a metal one will skin them for you. Um, but there's extra fiber and nutrients and all sorts of things in those skins that help nullify some of the starch molecules in the food itself. The other nice thing about meal prepping potatoes is that not only are potatoes the most satiating food, meaning they help make you feel fuller for longer with less of the ingredient. <laughs> when you meal prep potatoes ahead of time, cook them and then chill them in the refrigerator, they have what is called, it's, I think it's resistant starch or something like that. If you're curious about it, definitely look into it. If you would like a whole video on that, let me know. But basically it takes longer to convert to glucose in your system. So there's less of a blood spike when you eat potatoes that have been cooked and cooled, it helps those starch molecules become resistant and it's a better, has a lower impact on your blood sugar, if that's something that's important to you. Anywho's it, we're gonna start throwing this together. I'm gonna throw some tips at you as I can. We're gonna start with dicing up our potatoes and tossing them with some oil and seasoning and then getting them in an oven. So speaking of ovens, I need to preheat mine to 425. You'll also notice I have my baking pan and my pan that I'm going to use for cooking the beef in already out because not having to stop in the middle to get out all the things and stuff that I need, again, saves us a little time. I know it doesn't seem like it takes any less time to do it in the beginning than it would to do it as you're doing it, but I find if I'm not having to interrupt my groove to stop and get things, it's probably just my ADHD, but I tend to go a little bit more quickly when I have everything gathered together at the beginning. I also highly recommend if you're a person that likes to roast vegetables or cook anything in the oven, these pre-cut, what's this stuff called? Parchment paper. 
squares, rectangles, or whatever. They're perfectly sized for half sheet pans. I will link them down in the description. I bought a box of those five years ago and I'm still making my way through them. They're finally just now, I'm starting to get down to like, I think I've got like my last 20 or something like that. I use maybe one or two of them a week and I think there's like 500 in a box. I'll link it down below. I find it more cost effective that way even than just buying the rolls and then I'm not like dealing with the roll that then you have to like crumple up to get it to stop from rolling up in the corners and all the things. So I just prefer this and then I can even use it in my air fryer. I can just cut them in half. It's just, they're, super convenient and I'm all about making my life easier, especially when it's more budget friendly. First things first, we're gonna cut up these taters. I'm gonna grab a bowl. Am I? No, I'm not. Cause I don't wanna wash more dishes than I have to. So there you go. So I'm just gonna cut up these potatoes and I want them to be bite-sized dish, you know? So that's the size that that resulted in. And that to me, it's a little big. I'll probably cut that in half. I mean, don't get me wrong, I got a big mouth, but. And then she calls for like salt, garlic powder, black pepper. I'm just gonna use an all-in-one seasoning. I got this one, I think at Walmart, and it's really good. My husband and I like it on everything, really. What's in here? Dehydrated vegetables, garlic and onion, salt, MSG, which is why it's so good. Spices, herbs, and an anti-caking agent. So it's it's just, it's yummy. It's got lots of stuff. I use it for all sorts of things. I like it on vegetables. Uh, the Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse seasoning is also delicious on vegetables. The recipe calls for four teaspoons of oil, which is quite a bit. It's a tablespoon plus a teaspoon. I'm not gonna bother measuring right now. I'm not tracking my calories or anything. I'm just trying to get back in tune with my body and listening to what sounds good. This is avocado oil. Um, so I'm just gonna drizzle it on top. I'm gonna toss them in the oil first, just on the pan. And you could do this in a bowl, but like why dirty another dish is what I say. I may have gone a little ham on the oil, that's okay. It'll get them crispy and I like crispy. Oh great, now I have oily hands. I should have opened this first. Sprinkle the seasoning on top. Man, that sounds good. Don't be afraid of using a lot of seasoning. Pet potatoes can take a lot of seasoning, like a lot of seasoning. So don't be scared of really caking it on there, especially salt. And now I'm gonna spread them out into an even layer. So this is a pound of potatoes. And this meal prep is gonna make four servings, but you could easily stretch this to five, I think. Cause like I'm looking at this amount of potatoes going, I'm supposed to eat a fourth of that in one sitting. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm done fiddling with that. I'm gonna wash my hands. So she wants me to bake these at 425, tossing them every 15 minutes for 45 minutes to an hour. I don't think mine are gonna take that long because my potatoes are cut a lot smaller than hers, but I will still toss them every 15 minutes, I guess. This would be a lot better in an air fryer. If you have one of those smaller air fryers with the baskets, like that's how I would cook this because it would take way less time and you could just shake the crap out of it every 10 minutes or so. And I'm gonna put this on the bottom rack. My face. The next part is to prep the taco meat. I already put together the taco seasoning. Um, you can just, by all means, use a packet of taco seasoning. It'll be delicious. I just happen to have all of the ingredients for her homemade taco seasoning on hand. So in here is a teaspoon each of garlic powder, cumin, kosher salt, not regular salt. If you're using regular salt, use less. A teaspoon of chili powder, paprika, half a teaspoon of oregano. And then I added a little, a few things of my own that I like to put in my own taco seasoning, which is, I think it was probably about a quarter teaspoon of coriander, a quarter teaspoon of red chili flakes, cause I like spicy. And then I also added a few shakes of MSG because it's delicious. In here, I have a quarter cup of water and a half a cup of just canned tomato sauce, which is four ounces. 
I, they, they did not have four ounce cans of tomato sauce in my grocery store. That was what she said to use was a four ounce can of tomato sauce. Eight ounce is the smallest I could find. So that's what's in there. Look at me not being prepared like I told you to be. And then her recipe calls for a half of an onion with a half of a small onion, which I have here and I will dice that up. And then her recipe called for like two or three tablespoons of bell pepper. I don't like bell peppers, guys. They, they do something to my person. Like when I eat them, they take over the flavor of everything. I burp them up for days afterwards, so I don't like them. So that's the nice thing about cooking yourself is you can modify things. I have a jalapeno sitting in my fridge, so I'm gonna use probably, this is a very big jalapeno, I'm probably gonna use half of this. And I'm also probably gonna take out the ribs and seeds because I put the chili in my seasoning already so I don't want to blow my head off although I probably wouldn't anyway because my husband and I eat fairly spicy food. I'm going to start with my onions so that I can get my ground beef going and I'm going to store the other half with the skin on because I will use this for another recipe later tonight. Also if you've never seen these square size snack bags I love them. They're so great for stuff like this. Yes I know I'm destroying the environment single-handedly by using tiny snack size like lot bags. I know I shouldn't joke about stuff like that. I just know already that it's coming in the comments. I am going to start my pan preheating because I have an electric stove and it's useless and it takes forever to heat up. And then once it does heat up, it won't stop. So I'm gonna dice this onion up. My husband is not eating this, so I don't have to be super careful about how small this dice is, which is nice. I smell. Oh yeah, that's a spicy sucker. I don't know if you knew that, but you can usually tell by the smell of a pepper how spicy it's gonna be. And this one, she gonna be a spicy beast. If I hadn't already had those in my fridge, I probably would have just done mushrooms. Would have been really good, I think. Get this ground beef cut open. And I think I'm gonna pull you closer, Tony Danza. Pop in this ground beef. Get out of there. Oops fine. I'm the only one eating it. It doesn't matter that my hands are in it. Get these onions and jalapenos in here. I am also going to add my seasonings. Just let everybody get to know each other while it's cooking. Once I've gotten all of the meat completely broken up, and I like mine broken up very, very small, and I'm going to add in that water and tomato juice, not juice, sauce. And I'm going to put the lid on and let that simmer for like a good 20 minutes, which will be just in time for me to get out those potatoes and give them their first toss. My water and tomato sauce. Stir that around. Okay, I heard you. All right, put that lid on and let that go for 20 minutes. All right, let's pull out these potatoes real quick. Oh, move your face, Mindy. Not fast enough. They're seen. Ah! We're gonna not grab the pan and then, ooh, they're already starting to crisp up. And this would be an, a nightmare to do without the parchment paper. Toss them around. I'm gonna try not to be too anal about this, which it's too late, but you know. And I'm gonna put it back in on the bottom rack. And pretty much all of the active time that I have for this recipe is done. That beef is gonna sit there and simmer away. The potatoes are gonna continue to cook. When the beef is done simmering, I'll take the potatoes out one more time to toss them, see if they look done to me or if they need another 10 or 15 minutes. Again, I cut them smaller than the recipe originally indicated. And I will be cooking these again when I reheat them. So those potatoes actually felt mostly done. Like, so at this point, they're pretty much just crisping up. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And then I'm just gonna need to divide them among my four containers, seal them up, and it'll be delicious. Let's go back to future Mindy and see how this tastes. Thank you yesterday, Mindy. Yeah, apparently I didn't have enough of that bit. So now this morning I am ready to eat my breakfast. Let's get those eggs together. Again, you could just scramble all of these eggs together as the recipe suggests, but 
I have a thing about reheating leftover eggs, so I'm just gonna make my egg portion every morning before I eat it while my potatoes are warming up in the air fryer. So today I decided I'm definitely gonna do an actual egg scramble. I probably won't do that every day. Some days I may end up having like a sunny side up situation like I normally do with my eggs. Right now I'm just pulling the potatoes out of my meal prep container and I'm keeping the meat aside because I plan on throwing that in with my eggs. That is a lot of potatoes. I mean technically we could just throw it all in the same skillet and make a giant breakfast burrito if I wanted to but I'm keeping the potatoes separate because I want them crispy. So I'm gonna throw these in the air fryer real quick. Those are already cooked. Basically, I'm just crisping them up. So, I mean, maybe five, 10 minutes. And I have a fly that somehow made it into my house that I'm not happy about, but it's been bugging me for two days and I can't do anything about it. So I'm gonna grab two eggs out of the fridge. I also have some salsa from those salsas in my fridge. So I'm gonna use that too. And lastly, I'm gonna grab a little tiny block of cheese. I'm just gonna add a couple shreds in there. I have my two large eggs and my pan is preheating to like a medium-ish temperature. I'm gonna pull you closer, Johnny Danza. Come here. So I need a little bowl to put my eggs in because I'm going to scramble them. And if you have never scrambled eggs with chopsticks, I saw one of my favorite creators on YouTube. She's a Korean food content creator. Her name is Song Kyung Longest. If you've never watched her channel, oh, her recipes are so good. But she was like, it makes such a difference. And I'm like, how can it really make that much difference? But let me tell you, it makes a difference. I'm also going to put in a splash of high protein milk, like literally a tablespoon, maybe less. And you could up the protein content of this even more by putting in a little bit of egg white or maybe doing one egg and three tablespoons of egg whites. There are a lot of differing opinions on when to add salt to scrambled eggs. The salt actually breaks down some of the protein structures. So to me, it makes it fluffier. Give my pan a little spritzy spritz and add in my taco meat. I'm literally just going to pour my eggs onto the meat. And different people like their scrambled eggs different ways. I like mine barely cooked. So I'm gonna move these around. My non-stick isn't non-sticking as much as it used to. Okay, so basically I'm just waiting for most of the trails of egg to be done. And that's good enough for me. I'm gonna take that off the heat and let it just sit there for a minute. And shred some cheese on top, like a tablespoon or so, just enough to taste it and have a little creaminess on top. And this is just reduced fat Colby Jack that I had some of left over from Alice Springs chicken that I made last week. But look at that, doesn't that look delicious? That looks like a lot of food. And I still have potatoes. I might not be able to eat all of this. Got my potatoes. They are crisp hay, cheesy taco eggs, delicious salsa. Ooh, that's pretty. Let's give this a taste. It smells delicious. Get a little bit of that meat and that egg and that cheese and a crunchy potato. Mmm. Mm -hmm. It's definitely got those breakfast taco vibes. This would be really good in a low carb wrap. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Crispy. And the low carb wrap, I just want to reiterate, is because there's so much lower in calories, not because of the carbs. Obviously, I'm eating potatoes. I'm not worried about carbs. Carbohydrates are essential fuel for your body. They are your body and brain's preferred fuel source and the only fuel source that your red blood cells can use. <laughs> Anyway, this is delicious, super easy and quick to throw together. If I hadn't been filming, this probably would have taken me less than five minutes to do. I did let the potatoes go for about 10 minutes, but they didn't need it. Some of them are almost a little too crispy for me, <laughs> but delicious all the same. 
I don't even know that I'm gonna be able to eat all of this. This is a giant plate of food for me for breakfast. But if you're somebody who normally skips breakfast in the morning, I highly recommend, especially if you're on a GLP medication, but in general, I highly recommend incorporating breakfast into your routine, especially something that's packed full of protein because it will help to keep you full throughout the day and stave off those crazy hunger cravings later on in the day that are usually what tend to lead to some not so wise choices. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. Let me know if you like this format where I'm just going over one recipe and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.